antennas that you see here are uh, both vertex antennas, they're both 9 meter antennas and they're both used for the TT and C for uh, SES World Sky satellites. The NSS9 antenna, TT and C for SES World Skies. Uh, we can see from this antenna over to uh, most of the Pacific region. So it gives us coverage basically as we can see from this teleport and from our Adelaide teleports, we can see as far west as London and as far east as the west coast of the USA. The two antennas we have on the roof here are both C-band antennas. The antenna on the left is Appstar 2R. This antenna here is a 13 meter antenna used for Inmarsat, for Inmarsat services, which is basically used for ships at sea. The 4.5 meter antenna which we see here is pointing at Superbird C2 and USAT have just recently pointed this antenna at Superbird C2 as the demand for growth has grown for the JCSAT services. As well as having all these antennas, the actual uh, background of the station, we have terrestrial connectivity from AMCOM, AAPT, Telstra and Optus. Every satellite actually transmits a signal which is not for communications, it's purely for tracking. So what we have, we have a tracking receiver here, which is locked onto that receive frequency. That gives us a receive signal into a control unit. And this control unit, we use it to actually maneuver the antenna. So we can drive those big antennas from here. And this is the, the latest uh, technology, this the, the state of the art technology that everyone's using. But the beauty of this, this chassis can actually look at five different satellites at the same time, if we want it to. All these racks here, looking after the health of the satellite itself, making sure it stays in its geostationary orbit. Satellite in space was really a, a, a natural and a, uh, the most obvious way of communicating. Because it does a couple of things. It empowers the socially disadvantaged. It provides solutions in spots where cable simply doesn't work. And it's quite an effective and inexpensive way of communicating. So this project that we've talked to you about and that we've talked about in the press, Jabiru One, which is all about the launch of Australia's first non-government, non-foreign owned rocket, the logic of that is based on needs. Both the US government and the French government are excited about a new entrant into the world of space. They're excited because people in space and people in the satellite world know we've got slots and they know we can get customers. So they're, they're thinking, great, let's do, let's really work closely with these guys because we might get one, two, three, we might get another 20 satellites that we had thought that we wouldn't get. This Earth observation uh, satellites, it's not just uh, these satellites are not just important for business, they're important for security. Earth observation data, the sort of data that we get from space, Australia is a, a big country. Uh, it's very difficult for us to get weather data from all these remote areas, the, the, the continent, in order for us to be able to put the models together to do our weather predictions. So compared to other countries in the world, we are a very heavy user of data from space, from Earth observation satellites. The problem is we don't own any of those assets. We Entire, we, we rely entirely on foreign providers for this data. We, we almost have an obligation to play a more significant role in, in the way that uh, Australia treats this particular area of space. And I'm hoping that, that the project that I'm working on at the moment will be able to put before the government some options that will allow us to be a better global citizen.